Hey, I'm Gabe. And I'm John. In Breath of the Wild, unlike some Zeldas, you are not limited to just one horse. As a matter of fact, you can only have Epona by scanning one of two specific Link Amiibos. Horses are scattered all around the land of Hyrule, with some of them even being attached to side quests. And, just like a certain OS game, your horses can take damage and even die. But fear not, for in the world of Zelda, death isn't always goodbye. There is a way to bring your dead horses back to life, for a small fee that is. Meet the horse god Malania, who lives in the Faro region and watches over all the horses of Harun. While playing the game, we never gave much thought to Malania. As a matter of fact, after over 200 hours of Breath of the Wild, I only use his services for, um, testing purposes. But let's back it up a bit. For starters, Melania may not be what we usually consider as an actual god, but in fact a very powerful fairy. Not only does he live inside a giant flower bud like the other great fairies in Breath of the Wild, but the great fairy in the forest in Altset Island in the Wind Waker was referred to as a fortune goddess, and the queen of fairies from A Link to the Past was also called a goddess in the original Japanese. So there's no reason people and even Melania himself wouldn't call such a powerful being a god from their perspective. While on translations and after some wiki diving, like we always do to try and find content for videos, we came across a very interesting piece of information. His name is, well, his original Japanese name that is, Maro. Yes, there's supposed to be a longer A sound, but it's the same name of the ranch girl who loved horses and appeared a few times in Haru's history. Malania is not a bad name, and I get it that most locations in Breath of the Wild have names referring to other places and people from previous games in the series, and some, being derived from the original names, had to be adapted in translation in the best possible way. But the translation team almost chopped this entire reference down. That still doesn't mean the little girl from Ocarina of Time, or one of her descendants, grew up to be a magical deity. Of course, there's always a possibility in such a world, as Tingo is famous for his lifelong quest to become a fairy, but there's no real evidence that's actually feasible. Besides, the horse god is always addressed to as a male, so he would probably be a Talon, as that is always the name of Malon's father, so it's a common name in the family. The other possibility, and most likely, is that Malon was named after the horse god. If you stop to think about it, it is clear that the stables scattered in Breath of the Wild worship him, but this tradition could have started long ago, when there were fewer ranching families, and that would make Melania much older than we expected, and elusive enough, or maybe just flat out forgotten to most, to have passed unnoticed throughout all those adventures. An interesting side note that you may or may not know, and has nothing to do with nothing, is that Epona was first introduced as Malon's horse back in Ocarina of Time, is actually the name of the Celtic goddess of horses. Those stable owners shaped the roofs of their buildings in the horse god's fashion. However, it doesn't seem that many people have been able to actually see Malania in recent history, and his shape is quite uncommon to say the least, for people to reproduce his appearance right by chance across the land. While things and people changing shapes from game to game can be just artistic freedom, maybe some things, like a god or a fairy, may assume the shape they are believed to have by the people, and as such give you Melania the wooden mask, clothes similar to the tent-like roof of the stables, and hand similar to a great fairy. Great fairies can enhance items and physical abilities in other games too, besides Breath of the Wild, and sometimes at the cost of rupees to rekindle their power. The same is true for Melania, however, after recovering its former power, he will need an extra endure carriage, a horse's favorite, to revive your equine friends. Melania displays a kind of power never seen before, and only matched by the Triforce itself. If Ganon can revive his monsters and Melania can revive horses, what's the reason important people, like the champions who could oppose Ganon, can be resurrected as well? Is this helpful game mechanic opening a huge plot hole, or are actual people more special than animals and other creatures to not be easily brought back to life? Perhaps monsters and animals don't have souls in the Zelda universe, which makes it easier to revive them. Who knows? Still, the great fairies and even fairy queens differ from era to era, so it can be assumed they die, change roles, transcend or whatever over time. But the god of horses is old enough to have people named after him since almost a timeline ago. So who knows, perhaps he truly is something far more powerful than a fairy. So what did you think the horse god actually is? And what are his connections to other deities and the name Malon? Share your theories in the comments below. 
And hey, just so you know, we started a Twitch channel, where I'm currently playing Breath of the Wild on Master Mode, trying to go for 100%. And a second YouTube channel to post the edited gameplay. You can check the links in the description. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Well, the other channel too now. And you can check our last video, following how the Temple of Time changed across Hyrule's history. See you next video. Bye!